giant steps is easy. No, I'm not clickbaiting you or anything. Uh, people think this tune is much more difficult than it actually is. People get very confused by it, they get freaked out by it, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to break it down and show you that it's actually not that difficult at all. There are plenty of tunes that you probably know that are way more difficult to play through than Giant Steps. So uh, let's get into it. Now you may or may not know this, but uh, <laughs> I've played this tune a lot. and I'm gonna show you that it's actually much easier to improvise over than you might think. Before we get started, I want you to go ahead and download the free PDF that I created for you all about this Giant Steps lesson. You can go to the link at the top of the description down below, or you can go directly to davepollock.com slash giant steps. It'll be really good if you have that PDF up as I go through this lesson so you can follow along more easily. I made separate parts for C treble clef instruments, C bass clef instruments, E flat instruments, and B flat instruments, so make sure you're looking at the correct sheet for the key of the instrument that you play in. The first thing you have to know about this song is that speed kills. <laughs> Practicing this song, and any song really, at a very slow tempo lets you really hear each chord and key center and lets you make more melodic and lyrical choices over those chord changes when you're improvising instead of just trying to rip out some random licks and lines that you've memorized. You'll also be able to really hear the function of each chord because it's moving so slowly, and when I get into the functions in a little bit, you'll understand exactly what I mean by that. So now I'm inside of that PDF that hopefully you have downloaded by now. If you didn't, please go download that. It's completely free. I made it just for this lesson and it'll really help you as we go through this. I'm gonna be using the C Instruments treble clef sheet here. I don't know what instrument you're playing, but just understand that when I go through this, these are the concert pitched chords. As you see above each chord change, I wrote out the Roman numeral analysis of what the function of the chord is. I'm gonna get into that in a second and I'm gonna show you that as long as you know a couple simple key things about improvising, you can easily play over this tune. First off, I want you to notice that every single chord in the entire form either has a one, a two, or a five above it. Is that some type of mistake? Am I superimposing something? No. Every single chord in Giant Steps is either a one chord, a two chord, or a five chord. So if you know your two five ones, you can play all the way through Giant Steps without superimposing anything. Let's first just jump into the measures that are just straight up two five ones as they're written. You see here in measure four, we have a two five here, which resolves to G major. So there's our two five one in G major. Then we have another two five here in bar eight, resolving to bar nine, that's a two five one in E flat major. Then we have a two five one in G major, a two five one in B major, two five one in E flat major, and then a two five back to the one of B major again. What does this mean? Well, first off, if you know the very common turnaround or cadence or chord progression of the two five one, you can play through almost this entire song without anything else. The other thing you should know is there's only three different two five ones in this entire song. There's two five ones to B, two five ones to E flat, and two five ones to G. That's it, those are the three main key centers of Giant Steps, and those are the only three keys that you need to know how to play a 2-5-1 over. 
In this video, I'm not gonna go over two five ones. I did an entire live free masterclass about that complete with PDFs, and you can check that out in the link in the description down below. In that video, I go through how to construct a 251. I talk about different types of 251s, alterations, substitutions. I go in depth with a lot. So go check that out if you want some more information about 251s in particular. This is why it's important in jazz to know certain types of progressions. Common chord progressions are called that because they are very common in this music. Once you work on those progressions and you have ideas to play over them, you know how to alter lines and build vocabulary, then you can identify those progressions in new songs and then make it seem not so new anymore. There are really only roughly two measures that you need to worry about in Giant Steps that are not just standard two five ones. And they are the measures that I haven't circled yet. Basically bars one, two, and three, and then five, six, and seven. If you notice, I wrote one, five, one, five, one. Why did I write that? Well, a lot of people freak out when they see giant steps because it starts on B major seven, then goes up to the minor third. Oh my God, it's the flat three, dominant seven. No, 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 calm down. Take a breath and look at the function. The function of chords can change depending on the context. So just because it's a dominant seven doesn't mean it's gonna function the same in every song, but also, there are certain circumstances when you should look at a chord and say, how does it normally function and can it function that way in this instance? For example, B major seven to start, can that function as a one chord? Major sevens are usually ones. Is it a one chord? Well, yes, look at what comes before it. C sharp minor seven, F sharp seven, resolves back to B major seven. So that's our one chord, okay. So it's a resolution, great. D seven, uh, how do we do that? Uh, well. Dominant chords very often function as five chords. So what I mean by five chord, I mean it's the five of the key that it's going to or the key center it's going to. Does this D7 go to the resolution chord if this was the five? Well, let's think. D would be the five of G major. Is the G major follow it? Yes. This is just a five to one in G major. Don't try to analyze this D7 as if it's in the key of B major. The function of this D7, as soon as you get there is five to one in G major. And then our G major chord here is a resolution chord. That's the landing chord. We're now in G major. Then look what we do. Then we have a B flat seven, which functions as the five going to E flat major. Giant steps is just one, five, one, five, one, two, five, one. And then it follows the same pattern here, just down a major third. So we have our five to one, five to one. If that seems confusing to you, I'm gonna make it even easier. If you look at the bottom of the first page of the PDF, you'll notice I wrote bars one through three and five through seven. Those are the measures I was just talking about. On our landing chord and landing chords as all the major sevens, the B major seven, the G major seven, E flat major seven, G major seven, E flat major seven, and B major seven, we're gonna land on the third, just like it's written. In between that, over the dominant chord, we're gonna play a guide tone line of the one of the dominant chord, the flat seven of that dominant chord, which resolves down a half step to the third of that major chord. So we get one, flat seven down to three, one, flat seven down to three. Here's what that line sounds like over the chord changes. Could you hear that line? Can you hear how it works really well and just leads you through the changes? This is a great way to work on improvising through this part of Giant Steps, which is really the only part that's just not two five ones. So being comfortable with this section is beyond just the guide tone line. What if we applied some other musical elements to this guide tone line? What if we played around with the notes a little bit? What if we messed around with the rhythm? What if we added some notes or did some chromatic leading tones and did some enclosures and stuff? Well, we're gonna do that right now, and I want you to play along with me. Pause the video right now, go grab your instrument, make sure you have this PDF out because we're gonna trade back and forth. The track that I have playing only plays the first eight measures. Bars four and eight are empty, there'll be drums going through that, but we're just gonna repeat these eight bars. I'm gonna solo first through the eight measures. 
I'm gonna use this guide tone line as my guide, but I'm gonna change it in some ways. Then I want you for the next eight bars to play through these eight bars as well and use the guide tone line. And if you want and you're able, change it up a little bit, change some of the rhythms, maybe use some of the ideas that I'm using, but it's not a call and response and you don't have to play exactly what I'm playing back to me. We'll do it four total times. So the first time through I'll solo, second time through you solo, third time through I'll solo, and then the fourth time through you solo. Here we go, good luck and have fun. All right, how'd you do with that? Did you have fun? Were you able to get through it? If not, you can always come back to this video and just repeat that as much as you want. I didn't do anything crazy through those chords. I didn't try playing anything really wild over the dominant chords, but just understand that any dominant vocabulary that you already know, especially if you watched my 251 masterclass where I talked about alterations and substitutions, if you wanted to add some of them in there, please go ahead. It functions the same as any other five to one. The only difference is we're coming from this B major. For this guide tone line, I started above and started scaling down because I was like, you know what? This third here goes down a half step to the root right here, that works. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can just use regular voice leading using my six step process to get from this B major to this D7 in a very smooth and melodic way. Then you could play your favorite dominant sounds that resolve to this G major and so on and so forth. And you'll be able to create really cool, interesting, creative lines over these difficult chord changes. Now I'm gonna show you one more way to solo over those bars one through three and five through seven. If you remember from the 2-5-1 masterclass, I talked about turning a long 2-5 into a short 2-5 by actually superimposing that two chord right before the five chord over that dominant measure. We can compress that even further here to make it a 2-5-1 within each of these measures. Why would you wanna do that? Well, some people really like to think of the 251 and not just 51, and it's a lot easier for them to think 251, myself included. So I like to think this way. So basically, what we're doing is this we're resolving on beat one on our resolution chord each time. That doesn't change. What does change is how long we're hanging on to it. Instead of sitting on it for two beats and then moving to the dominant chord on beat three, we're instantly getting off of that chord and putting the two starting on beat two and then the five chord, the rest of the measure. I kind of put it here in an ambiguous way because it doesn't have to be just beat two for the two chord and then beats three and four for the five chord. You can kind of mess around with it and put it wherever you want really, but just understand that you have the one chord for one beat and then you have a two five for the next three beats resolving to one for one beat, then a two five for the next three beats and then your resolution chord. Same thing down here. Once again, if this seems way more confusing for you and seems way more difficult, do the other way. Think about the guide tone line and just play five to one and don't worry about the two at all. If you look below here, I wrote out a sample line over these chord changes thinking about that two five and I even wrote in the chords above it. I'm now gonna play this exact sample line while the rhythm section is playing these chords. So I have the rhythm section playing B major, then A minor, then the D7. So it's actually playing the two five one in there and I want you to hear what that sounds like when I'm playing this line thinking of the 251 while the rhythm section is playing that 251. Yes, that was a little cluttered with the rhythm section playing all of those chords there with that added two chord in every measure. But in a second, I'm gonna play the same sample line with the rhythm section playing the normal chords. So before that though, I just wanna do a quick analysis of this line. 
So I start on the five of B major, and I actually instantly go away from it. I go to the A minor on the and of one, and it kind of anticipates it, so it's okay. So I go up to G, then E, then C. So I'm going basically down the A minor seven, and then right here on B three, I'm going B, G sharp to A. So it's an upper, lower, neighbor enclosure going to this A, and then I skip from the A up to the flat nine, which is a nice chromatic upper neighbor landing on D. Or you can think of it as flat nine to five, which is a very common progression, very common guide tone line when going from a dominant chord to the one chord. Then I play that exact same line again, just shifted down a major third to fit the chords. Then I play the exact same thing again down here just to fit these chords. That was the line that I just came up with. You don't have to come up with that line if you have another two five line that works. Know that you can just put it in there and it still works as long as it leads you into all of these resolution chords. That is the most important. Think about resolving. How do you resolve? That's the big question and that's where a lot of people get confused in this song. It's just a lot of resolutions. You just have a lot of going to B, going to E flat, going to G. Going to B, going to E flat, going to G over and over and over again. You just have to know when it goes to each one. Repetition over these smaller sections of the tune will help get it in your ears a little better so you'll know when those chords are coming up so you can anticipate them even better. So like I said, now I'm gonna play the same exact line, but the rhythm section is gonna be playing the regular changes over these eight bars. Now I wanna trade eight bars back and forth again, just like we did with the guide tone line, but instead this time, I want you to think resolution chord, two, five, one. Resolution chord, two, five, one. Leave bar four blank. One, two, five, one, two, five, one. You could put any type of two, five, one line in there. If you're not super comfortable with it yet, you can just play chord tones, you can just play the roots even, or you can play the sample line that I have written out on the PDF. Once again, I'm gonna play the first time, you play second time, I'll play the third time, and then you play the fourth time. Here we go, good luck, and most importantly, have fun. Well, there you have it. I hope that sheds some light on what Giant Steps actually is as a song. Once you put a little bit of time into only a few measures of the tune, beyond that, you just have your standard two five ones that you'll see in any other song. Here are some action steps if you wanna get better at improvising over Giant Steps. First is get really comfortable with both long and short two five ones to concert B major, concert E flat major, and concert G major. Then take my PDF take that worksheet and look at bars one through three, five through seven, and play them as slow as you need to, chord to chord, and think about the one, five, one, or one, two, five, one. Work on guide tone lines, work on voice leading the way I taught you in my six step process, work on some of your two, five, one language that I taught you in my two, five, one masterclass, and you will be able to craft really creative melodic solos over this tune. The third action step with playing over this tune is you don't have to play this song. I know this is like a rite of passage for jazz musicians for some odd reason, and don't get me wrong, I love this song, but I also don't love certain songs that people seem to love, and I'm perfectly fine with that. And you should be fine with this too if you don't love this song. If you don't wanna play this song, don't play it. There are so many songs out there to play, you don't have to play Giant Steps just because all the cool kids are memeing it online. Simon Franzman. <laughs> but I really mean that. Don't feel like you have to learn this tune or that this is like the peak of jazz musicianship or jazz saxophone playing specifically. It's really not. It's a great tune, but there are many other tunes that I think are way more difficult and complex and are way more of a mountaintop type tune than Giant Steps. 
Thanks so much for watching. And if you're still hanging around at this point in the video, I have a little surprise for you. At the end of this month, September 2022, I'm gonna be teaching a three part workshop right here on YouTube about my process of getting extremely comfortable with jazz improvisation in a clear, concise, and simple way. At the end of that three part workshop, I'm gonna be announcing something incredibly big. It's so exciting, I can't wait to tell all of you, but I'm gonna keep it a secret for now until then. I know it's gonna change the way so many of you improvise and so many of you play the instrument, and I just can't wait to share it with you. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.